So what's up? Most things are bought on credit. Credit has been with humans since the beginning of civilization as, a, as an important part of, of economic exchange between people. I think we are a unique little company in, in that we have the, the knowledge and the capabilities of a much larger corporation. Most important thing is to be the best at what we do. I think in 10 years' time we will be big. I started the company with two friends in 1997. Initially around the idea of using something that was new at the time, the internet as means to collect and transport information, mainly focusing on negative payment information. I was finishing law school at the time, and I had to think, do I want to get involved in, you know, after five years of studying law, to create another blacklist? Then I studied how things were done in other countries, and I realized it, it shouldn't be a blacklist. There should be a, a database where you can consult objective database with no moral judgments or anything, just these are the facts, this is the information, some of it is positive, some of it is negative, just the fact, collect them and use the internet to provide access to it. We went around and, and, and no one wanted to invest in the company. I had $10,000 at the time, the other two had five each, so we put that in the pot and said, can we start with $20,000? And we said, well, that's what we have to do. So we managed to create the company with almost nothing. We help our clients take good decisions, accurate decisions, uh, fast decisions. We have to anticipate the, the development that will happen in, in the future. We use the traditional method of, of collecting various credit-related data on both consumers and, and companies. But increasingly we are, we are looking at new data sources, non-credit data. Then there is this here, which is what we would have a, a few years ago called a supercomputer. There's a lot of data on this computer. Equally important, it's connected to a lot of other data sources and with the consent of the individual we can access much more data and we can build models that can enable decision making that was not possible before. I feel like we just started something. The whole lending industry is changing, the relationship between the borrowers and the lenders is changing, the technological environment is changing, and I think we can play a, a, a leading role in that globally. I, I believe that you should specialize until you are the best at something. And then you can go back to generalizing and, and broaden the scope of your services or, or your markets. And we decided to specialize in starting new credit bureaus in uh, smaller emerging markets. And uh, now there's a car coming, so we should move over here. I am an entrepreneurial type, so I think I see something that I want to realize somehow in the future. This is one of my favorite places to think, to read, to forget, to rest the mind. I find that I take the best decisions when I'm trying to do nothing. This is very important for, for managers, for decision makers, maybe for everyone to check out so that's my recommendation to my colleagues. Don't work too hard. I 
grew up in a town that I felt was very big because it was the biggest town for tens of kilometers, population about 900. Open most of the year, you know, to traffic, but occasionally closed because of snow. How was Iceland back then, 30 years ago? It was a very different country in all areas, including in the business. Even 20 years ago when we were starting, the banks were mainly owned by the government still, and they were run by former politicians. If you wanted to meet with a CEO of a bank, you could not really do so unless you knew someone who knew him. Iceland was a colony, and many of the other companies in, in, in our business, they come from countries that used to have colonies. There is something political connected to it. Having been a colony as well, maybe we, we managed to make some connection with uh, people in, in other countries that either were directly colonies or, or were dominated by another foreign power. Another question is, is why do we do this? What's the purpose? If, if we look around, this car here is rental actually, but uh, which is one form of, of, of financing. Uh, most of the cars you will see, they are borrowed on credit or leasing. And the houses, all of them, they're financed with credit. Everything is credit. Even we use our credit cards to buy food. So we are borrowing money for milk. If you would remove the credit from the equation, the whole economy would come to a standstill. If there is no credit, there is no development. The financial services are very developed in Iceland electronically. For example, in Iceland, you have the by far highest proportion of payments being made electronically. It's a very nice test market. The time to market for a new product is, is very quick. So we can test something and then we can export it. And there's a no-nonsense culture, if you will. So if we want to go to a particular market, then that's just what we do. The challenge is to understand where to go because there's so many changes. The people who are 20, 25, they will be the main spenders in the near future. They want something very different from, from me, not to mention my, my, my parents. And the main challenge is to find what it is that they need. I think it's more important to recognize your mistakes than to avoid making mistakes, because that's something you have control over. But in many cases, you know, preventing mistakes from happening is impossible. Often, for example, people think that they can make the perfect decision by just gathering enough information or take enough time to process it and take the decision. Most decisions do not improve with, with the time you take. As an information company, of course, we have to say you have to have the right intelligence, but you have to go by your instinct for much of what you decide. For example, when you're hiring people, I think less than half of the people I've hired were the right decisions. You find the best people when, you, when you're using references, when someone is willing to say, I know someone I can recommend. The, the only constant factor lead to success we found, or I found, was better management than anyone else. People are not just important, it, it's absolutely vital. How important is it to acknowledge mistakes in business? I don't make any mistakes. Never? No. No. <laughs> This is an international company and 80% of the people in it are not Icelandic. The objective is to try to mix knowledge and to preserve the culture that results from where we come, because that's who we are. We try to find local people to manage our companies and, and we have managed to do this in, in almost all the countries where we are. Sometimes, you know, the problem is not to get, get the people to do something, the problem can be to have the discipline in place. It's a problem that, that's good to have, 
If the problem is discipline, then you can address it. If the problem is lack of drive, then you can't do anything really. What we try to do in other countries is to hire similarly minded people, which can be found everywhere. So for example, our colleagues in Lithuania working in our company there or in Czech Republic, they are very similar. They just want to do things. And I believe that this is the culture that comes from our background, is part of what we are, and then and the people they adjust to this, this culture. What is the most important lesson you think you've learned over these 20 years? To know your limits. This both goes for how much you can take on at each point in time. Sometimes we just take too much on and then you can't do anything properly. You have to be selective about what you spend your time on. Don't believe that you are smarter than others. If your business strategy is based on the assumption that you are smarter than everyone else, then you, then you will fail. Sometimes people are, are too much focusing on the blame game, you know, saying, this is not my fault, this is someone else's fault. Blame to me is just a concept that is not interesting. It's a negative concept that, that is obstructing something being created. When people start saying, it's not my fault, it's his fault or something, I said, stop it, I'm, I don't care. What matters most is what we do next. So, what's next? We're getting a new CEO. And uh, so I'm taking a step back. Uh, I've been doing this for 20 years and, and uh, the companies come become uh, big and complicated. We have 450 people in 25, six countries. And uh, we need a little bit more structure, make sure that we are using all our resources in the right places. So we have a, a new guy coming in, Stefano. I will become the chairman of the board. So I will be involved in the major decisions, creating the strategy, uh, maybe buying some companies. So I'm, I'm not going anywhere far. But for now, this is the, this is the strategy. And here is uh, the man himself, <laughs> Stefano. I read somewhere that the difference between good companies and great companies is, is often the, how easy it is to replace people. The great companies had CEOs that could be replaced, while some of the other companies, if the CEO goes, the company goes down with them somehow. It's my goal to become unnecessary. And I've been working towards that direction for years. And now I feel I have succeeded.